Good morning traders, it's the Cabo. It's about 10.20 in Chicago. We are on the 4th of January. Let's jump over and take a look at our regular daily video update. Um, we're having a mixed market with Dow Jones actually rallying to new all-time highs quite strongly here on the very large caps. Looking pretty good. I mean, you have, um, you know, a bunch of financials actually rallying today. Remember, with the rise in that 10-year yield, which is now sits at 168, the financials are benefiting greatly and uh, that's kind of shown in the price today and you can see that i mean some of them are in uh, the dow jones and it's looking pretty good but the tech sector it's getting beat up quite badly here we're selling off in the nasdaq we're down about 1.72 percent uh on uh you know, on the futures market, I actually opened a, a short long term position in here. I mean, a, a, a long short term position, I would say, um, looking for a bounce, possibly back towards 16,315 just on the futures market here, just a little bit of an intraday play. And then you can see the SP 500 is actually mixed here, but selling off. Remember, after this kind of interesting and strong rally upwards, we're expecting a little bit of a correction. So just more of a mixed market. Uh, the stocks, um, you know, are especially in the Nasdaq, some of, uh, uh, you know, those kind of sweethearts uh, during the pandemic are continuing to get hit. So, uh, for example, Peloton is one that I'm involved in and I, and I starting to, you know, sell a bunch of puts from 45 down. Um, you know, I sold 45, I sold 47, I started to sell 30 and we're still kind of in the downtrend formation. So uh, I'm taking a little bit of heat on Peloton, but, um, you know, I'm looking to assimilate the stocks based on the premium that I received, you know, at these lower levels. So hopefully we'll end up being a solid trade. Maybe, you know, I still have to wait a, a couple of months, uh, maybe even more for this trade to kind of turn back and uh, move back, let's say at least towards 50 to $60 in the stock. And then the other one, it's Zoom, that it's also kind of getting hit a little bit again today, making new lows below 180. Um, you're looking, it's, it's trading now at about 172. So it's another one that I have a little bit of interest in because it's been... Um, it's been a pretty good performance with a nice correction. So uh, just kind of starting to, to nibble at some lows, trying to catch some falling knives into these stocks. Um, you know, the rest of the market, it's pretty flat. I've also uh, um, started to show a little bit of interest in silver. I uh, opened a, a, a long position here um, just for a short term trade. Maybe we can take it back towards 2380. Um, this seems like a, a, a you know clean consolidation sideways with another burst higher out of here. So I'm looking for that to um, see if I can benefit from it over the next uh, a few upcoming session. Dollar index is pretty much flat, not a whole lot happening in there. And then oil comes back to reattack, make one more high in here. So failure to the downside, bullish engulfing, and a move higher. So energy and financials are doing pretty decent. Uh, today overall bitcoin it's still in this um you know horrendous range um trying to defend somebody's really really trying to defend this 45 500 45 600 level um and it's been holding for you know uh, numerous attempts um but it seems like um you know whatever happens underneath those levels might be way too juicy for this market not to go after them so we'll see what happens it's interesting definitely and i've kind of and i'll come back and take a look at some of the odds but uh you know i i kind of put this thick line thick support line in here to kind of uh, you know, obviously show the importance. You guys are seeing this obviously for quite a while, uh, the importance on this level. And, um, you know, you've had this, this very nice bullish engulfing patterns, um, on this kind of 12 hour chart where you could see clearly how they're being rejected and then taken over. So, um, you know, I, I was excited a little bit about the move higher. I still am. The more this level r resists without being taken right the, the stronger it becomes and the subsequent bounce should be pretty solid um it just hasn't happened yet so we'll see this is that's why i want to wait until this kind of forty-eight thousand gets taken out just to get a little bit better confirmation that a low has been formed the other uh, scenario is that this you know could break lower like that um, take these stops and then quickly get a bullish engulfing and reverse higher like that. So that's usually something that Bitcoin likes to do. 
um, and it's something that I'm going to play if I notice that formation on the charts. In terms of the count, it's a very messy count. It starts to, uh, um, you know, look more like a possible B wave triangle in here. So if this is, let's say, a wave A or a W, this could be an X wave followed by another ABC decline to complete a larger second wave. So there's, that's why I'm saying there's like a lot of opportunities, uh, not opportunities, possibilities, um, based on this, on the structure that we're getting here. This could be the end of the B wave. So you can have a one, two, three, four, five, just like I have under the scenario, this could be an X wave. You still can move higher in, in B wave out of here. So you can have, let's say, A, B, C, X, A, B, C, and still move higher in B. So um, it's just kind of all over the place. A lot of things can happen. So I'm trying to get, um, you know, a little bit of a read from the fact that this support is holding strongly. And uh, one of these patterns eventually will pan out. I know it's, you know, uh, extremely confusing, but I'm prepared for any scenario. So I would like it for it, obviously, to go, uh, you know, over the bullish side. You know, we're, we're holders of Bitcoin and this kind of benefits. Uh, but moving, uh, you know, towards the lower side here could provide some opportunities as well. So let's just see what happens. It is frustrating, uh, but we'll continue to just kind of stay patient with it and, um, you know, wait for it to uh, give us a little bit of a resolution. Longer time frame here, um, you know, this appears um, as being, uh, you know, a decent interpretation, A, B, C, D, and E. I saw a lot of counts. I, I've asked a bunch of guns. I've asked, um, you know, people on the public uh, uh, Telegram room, no responses out of there, but uh, mostly on Twitter. And it looks like uh, a lot of people are counting this, at least from the responses I got, are, count are counting this in this way. So you're looking, I think they're looking at this to be a three-wave move, like this in a wave A, then up in B, and then down in C, right? So you're starting the wave count from these levels to give you a flat an A, B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in C. Um, and that to me, it's uh, very, very awkward to kind of count it this way and then move a B wave to new highs and then uh, uh, come back in the C wave. So, um, you know, if you really want to count it in three waves, I mean, you might as well just leave the move there to a WXY, uh, consider it done, go up in three and then just wait for C wave. But there's a lot of there's a lot of interest um, in the Elliott Wave community from uh, at least some of the guys that have responded to me, um, you know, and kind of what I've been noticing even on Telegram, uh, that this is a flat move and, and uh, um, you know, it's going to sell lower in the C wave of a flat. Uh, it's, it's fine. I just don't know, um, you know, why, you know, we're having this... Um, you know, obsession with the flat scenarios all the time I'm getting. It's just because I think, um, you know, people find flat extremely interesting and extremely, um, you know, kind of painful in a way, you know, through the fact that, you know, you're going up in three waves and then you're selling off in five waves. Uh, but remember the counts from these highs here, uh, even the completion of this one, um, there is a lot of uh, um, arguments that could uh, be had, for example, at where this wave A finished, where this decline finished, does it finish here or did it finish back in here? Um, you know, it's it, the rise out of here, right? Is this a five wave move or it's a three wave move? So um, eventually we will get through the stuff, but um, it's not as clear as you know we would like it to be i mean you can try to make it as clear for yourself as possible but it doesn't mean that that's the right approach so um to me it's much more important to stay flexible and just um don't necessarily care so much about you know what's the right structure but rather look at the price action and just kind of flow with it and 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 uh, you know don't necessarily become obsessed with the wave structure and the count um but rather see how you're positioned for it and what are you willing to take, what level of, of let's say, pain or excitement or entry levels, or how can you trade this pattern rather than, you know, what is what is it? So how does this actually help you uh, in your approach um, in what do you want to do? So um, does it really matter what this pattern is? The question is, are you going to buy Bitcoin here or are you going to buy Bitcoin now? Uh, are you going to sell Bitcoin here or are you going to sell it higher? 
Um, like, what are you going to do with all this information? How does this help you, right? And for me, when I, when there is something I recognize and I like, I act on that information. Um, the count, to me, it's a little bit secondary to that. It's something that's more of a roadmap. And sometimes those roadmaps are confusing and you're getting, you know, signs in all kind of different directions. And that's a, that tells me like, listen, there is no need to pound uh, don't need to force anything in here. The market, it's in a place where it needs to figure itself out. Nobody can read the future. It's going to figure it out. And then we're going to get, uh, you know, moving from there. And that's going to be an opportunity. Will that be, let's say, back down here? Or will it be back in here at the support line? Uh, you know, however that's going to happen. Will we move higher? Uh, and you're going to have to make those decisions, uh, you know, when the right time comes. For me right now, it's not a time to make decisions. Um, that's kind of how I feel about it, right? It's the structure. If it's a structure that's not clear, there's no decisions to be made. Or if the structure is not getting to a clearer pattern, then there is no uh, decisions to be made. So I want to see ABCs. I want to see more completed flat structures. I want to see ends of triangles. I want to see... Uh, you know, equality between waves, uh, X, I mean, Y versus W, stuff like that, 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 that excites me. There is nothing here, um, in this price that excites me other than the fact that we are, you know, holding a very strong support. And I don't really care which way the price goes at the moment. It could go lower. That's fine. You're going to take a little bit of pain on your Bitcoin. Uh, but this doesn't tell me, you know, sell my Bitcoin. It doesn't tell me, you know, buy a lot of Bitcoin either, right? So it's just a matter of, um, you know, stay calm, hold it, uh, you know, look for the next opportunities. Right now, it's a little bit tricky. So um, I don't know if I make myself clear on this stuff, guys, but um, I just kind of wanted to drive that point across on 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 being overly obsessive um, you, with the wave structure when um, the things are not that clear. Right. So pushing a narrative of, yeah, no, this is a flat or this is a zigzag or this is a triangle um, and we actually know what's going to happen. It's not quite like that all the time. OK. And there are situations where the markets are going to give you, uh, uh, you know, harder, harder things to deal with. So and that's kind of where we are. It was much simpler when the market sold off in a very nice um, you know, three-way uh, pullback in here, right? It was much simpler when you had an inverted head and shoulder and you kind of saw uh, that there could be an explosion happening on the market and you kind of see how the market is coiling up. So um, these are the situations that, that we have to deal with. Anyway, I'll get off of my soapbox and move over to, uh, I mean, hopefully this this talk and this information gives you, gives you, um, you know, a little bit better, uh, um, let's say, understanding to kind of where my mind is at. That's all I wanted to say. So uh, XTZ, it's another one that I'm watching. Uh, uh, you know, we are long in this thing. We've been uh, adding to these positions down into these lows. So, um, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have long positions in Tezos. Uh, you know, I like how we're kind of pushing out of here. So I'm watching it. Some of the alts are, 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 are showing signs of strength, which is nice to see. It's not all over the place. It's like a little bit of a rotation. Um, so you saw Algo moving and now Algo is kind of pulling back slightly, but still in this uh, uptrend of these lows, you saw Dot uh, moving for a while higher in here and now it's kind of correcting. And you see now H-Bar. H-Bar is starting to attack those highs. Uh, I see Atom, um, you know, starting to push higher as well. Remember, we were expecting this correction and we've gotten it. Now, you're not very precise in kind of, okay, how far this is going to go and, and exactly... Uh, you know, how deep it is, but you kind of smell that something is coming and, you know, there's opportunities. And that's, to me, that's the, the simplicity of uh, kind of wave analysis um, and, uh, you know, pattern analysis for that, for that matter. Not necessarily, you know, what's the exact count here. It's more of a, of a pattern and wave structure and right look rather than, than is it a W, is it an X, is it, you know... These things can be, uh, you know, debated a little bit more. Uh, but what cannot be debated is that sometimes, you know, correction and impulses and, and structures are, 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 are clearer. Um, 
And then, you know, Filecoin, it's holding these levels. Again, I, I, I've expressed interest in this one up into these levels. Why? For exactly the same reason, because this is a corrective pattern uh, that appears to be in a nice three-way setback. I mean, textbook pullback in a 618 um, in a failed attempt of a B wave to move higher, uh, either a B or an X, you know, arguments can can go on. I don't care, but it is a move that was against uh, this move. It failed and then it pushed lower. So now I'm recognizing a pattern that starts to excite me. Can it still come lower? Sure, uh, but I am willing to uh, put my money there uh, because it looks better in terms of price structure and it looks like something that I can be interested in. Uh, <clears throat> what else it's kind of doing um, a little bit of a move this morning? I talked about ICP, uh, and I talked about this as it was pushing this pullback and pushing higher out of here, I think, yesterday, and in a few posts before as well. It is the fact that I, there was a tradable move out of here in ICP. There was something that, uh, you know, you've gone in an impulse, you've uh, you know, you started to make those lower lows, lower highs, and you're starting to have a change in the direction. And there was a clearer pattern forming that this is likely going to break up higher. Now, from 28 to 34, it's a decent move. Guys, you know, let's say that you involved back in here, you've got a 20% move. That's a, that's a nice, decent return, um, you know, for a trade. And it looks even better uh, even if I look at the longer time frame here, right, I look at this, and now what I want to do is I want to measure this move and try to say, well, where is, um, let's say, my uh, extension of uh, 161.8. Uh, so if you look back in here with the 132 just on an impulse, let me see if I can get the other one as well, you know, for a, a, a for, from a wave 2, if I can find it here, expansion, right, there you go. Oh, I and then pull back. So here you are, you just passed, so you pull it back to this, which is probably a, a 618. I don't think there is there is an argument there. I'm pretty sure that's what, kind of what that is back there. Uh, now push higher and you're looking for, uh, you know, $41 in this thing, right? That would be a third wave and it starts to look like that's a third wave type structure. And you should get a fourth wave and a fifth, then a three wave setback, and that would be the next, um, opportunity to kind of get involved in ICP, let's say if you've missed this run. And that's kind of how I look at these things, okay? There is the initial advance, that forms a pattern, you're getting a little bit of a pullback, and then um, and then back. And here is and here is something interesting. This is how this could look. Look at what happens at the left side of the chart here. Right, you have this consolidation over. Now, think about this. Look at this move uh, moving higher, and I'm just kind of going to draw this with my marker, right? Let's say that that's a 1, that's a 2. And now you're getting a three, maybe up into the 618. Let's say that you get an ideal level. You get a four, which is a little bit more sideways because this one was, was pretty deep. And then you get a pull, uh, move higher. Now, see, here is what happens here. You're coming back towards these levels. Okay. That's wave one or wave A, whatever you want to call it. Right. And now, wouldn't you expect? If the market moves up into these levels in five waves, wouldn't it be normal to expect that you can take profits up into these levels and expect a three-way setback that you don't want to be part of, right? Now, look at what happens here. You're coming back and retesting these levels back in here, right? There you go. And then you push back up higher out of here, and that's an inverted head and shoulder. And that's how a trade change happens, all right? Most of the times, you're finding a low, you're... Uh, you're uh, um, establishing a five wave impulsive move off the lows uh, if you're having uh, such a luck to be more of a textbook move and then you get sometimes these moves are a little bit messier can be a leading diagonal whatever and then you're pushing you know and then you're creating that move so it's a matter of being patient and then this is going to be your next entry you can start to accumulate here you can start to accumulate here and then push back up higher now i don't talk about this strategies every single time on every single day but every once in a while in my videos i will try to kind of explain my thought process what goes in um sometimes you don't hear from me in the room necessarily because there's really nothing there to kind of work with and i can't follow a hundred coins all the time i would like to have you know, three, four guys working and just kind of showing me your kind of patterns all the time, and that's fine. Uh, but personally, first of all, I trade. I get involved in a lot of other markets as well. Uh, but when something starts to make sense, I look at it and I try to kind of, uh, you know, show it in there. So if you want to save the structure, you know, maybe we can look over 
you know, maybe you'll forget about ICP for in the next three, four videos, but this thing will continue to happen, right? And then uh, uh, maybe by March, you know, or February, um, you know, you'll get this pattern. Uh, people would have forgotten that I have, uh, you know, explained all this and, and, and looked at this, but the, but the move continues. The move continues and it's probably going to take this shape over time. Remains to be seen. You know, we were fooled before by the market. Things can obviously, uh, um, you know, do whatever they want. Life happens every single day and things change. So this is kind of where we are. But that's a pretty decent approach that I think, you know, might pan out here in ICP. Sorry uh, to, to kind of spend a little bit of time here. I think it's a, it's kind of a good example of a, um, you know, of a kind of trading expectation uh, moving over uh, into the future. Uh, all right. Well, nothing else overall, really. I, I just kind of wanted to, to kind of uh, talk about it a little bit there. And then Ethereum, um, still in this kind of messy correction, but remains, uh, I think, to me, a corrective pattern. Um, the moment you kind of start to get a deeper sell off and start to get more of a third wave type, third wave type price section, um, you know, then you can kind of look more of a, of a larger sell off or, or, or more of a, you know, a, a structural change in the count. But for right now, I think that's clean impulse. That's a move against the trend, which gets me excited that possibly Ethereum, you know, will eventually break out, out of here into another impulse higher, uh, you know, over 5,000. Remains to be seen, you know, but that's kind of how it looks at the moment. Um, the, you, you, this could not be done. This could be a move against the trend. You could still sell lower, and this is maybe more of a complex, let's say, W, X, Y, X, Z, whatever, uh, you know, triangle in here. Uh, you know, there's many ways to kind of uh, split this. Uh, you know, uh, go ahead and try as much as you can, see what you can come up with. I, I don't feel the need to do that at the moment. I just look at it and say, you know, this does look corrective. Let's see, kind of see what happens. And then, um, you know, the moment the, the, the market will push back above these levels and start to kind of break up higher here, that would be the signal for me that that correction uh, is likely completed. So, um, you know, until then, we'll continue to wait a little bit more. Uh, and that's kind of where I'm at, guys, with, uh, with my presentation this morning. Thanks for watching, and I'll be talking to you a bit later. We'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on Bitcoin as it's, um, you know, trying to fight with these levels. You could see that the moment that NASDAQ started to sell off, um, you know, from that move that it kind of made today, Bitcoin kind of pulled back a little bit. Talking about that, uh, uh, um, you know, correlation between tech stock and the technology, uh, uh, you know, that, that Bitcoin is at the moment, uh, or, or, or the way, the way it kind of works, right? Uh, look at this nice failure. In terms of price action, look at that. Um, look at this level being a pretty strong resistance, right? Back in here, it's been kind of holding for a few times. And now, wouldn't it be nice that this would be, let's say, a pullback, maybe even something like that. It's already happening. That's your neckline. This is your head in here to the downside. And hopefully, you can start to push kind of back out of here, right? So, patience on here. As long as these levels continue to hold, uh, that's another good indication you know, that the market could break to the upside. But, you know, remains to be seen if we're going to get rewarded on that or not. Okay, talk to you later, guys.